three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do s***. This is the O-Line Committee. I want to tell the audience how much of a warrior Jeremiah mm. Searles is today. So, first of Dude, all, as day. people know, we record pretty early. man. We're like 5 a.m. club on mm-hmm. these recordings, and this is going to be a gigantic day one of free agency recap. So, Jeremiah is going to sling hot takes about Kirk Cousins to the Falcons, <laughs> about Brian Burns to the Giants, and then he's going to get his arms sliced over. You have surgery in like two hours, dude. You're just yeah, here for check it. In, check in at 745, get the old wing fixed. So we're just, we're just grinding, man. You know, it's just another day, just another Tuesday. I'll be – I reached out to all the, all the boys, and I was like, hey, if you need me, don't call me. Call Chris, call Zach, call another partner. If I don't make it out, hey, yeah. call Chris, call hey, Zach. It's you know, been a call great, me. It's been a great run. Yeah. It's been what a, a great warrior, run. dude. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. When you told me that you were just casually having surgery on a Tuesday, you're like, yeah, hey, next Tuesday, I'm going to be down. I'm getting that surgery. I'll be back Wednesday, though. I was like, <laughs> I literally like lost my breath. I can't think about that kind of stuff anymore. Like, dude, I hate need, it. Trust dude, me, I'm not happy about you it. You don't seem like you do. I feel like you're really excited I mean, for the wake-up part. I feel like I you're mean, really excited. I had someone yesterday tell me, they're like, oh, well, enjoy the anesthesia. I'm like, oh, I will. Oh, but, I like, there, there's a piece. That's the only that's the only silver lining about this is you get that, like, euphoric wake-up out of anesthesia. Some that's people true. panic and don't like it. I think it's the most relaxing thing of all time until you fully are awake and, like, oh, shit, that hurts. Yeah. Right? Like, until you reach that point, it's not a bad time. It's bad. It's bad. Dude, I'm so it's so it's my right shoulder and I'm right handed. I'm nervous about that. Is this a That's, football injury or what? Like, what are we talking? Probably. About? So I mean, like three weeks ago, three, three no, weeks this is ago, a pickleball like, injury. Stop it. <laughs> it might be <laughs> three weeks ago. I don't. I wouldn't play. I don't know what happened. My shoulder just really started bugging me. Like it was just like, man, this is this is like getting caught, like clicking, popping, and so I got. I went in uh, and had one of my guys that i lift with at the gyms an orthopedic surgeon and i was like how quickly can you cut me open because this is a problem and so we went and got an mri and he, he called me he's like have you ever dislocated this shoulder i was like probably i don't really remember but probably at one point he's like well you definitely did he's like your shoulders tore from they do it like clocks right that's how they kind of measure it like so if imagine facing forward is noon right 12 o'clock i'm tore from two o'clock to nine o'clock so the whole back end of my shoulder <laughs> what has been torn for I don't know how long, and then he's like, and when you t- and when you dislocated, you actually fractured the front oh, part of your shoulder, God. and he's like, you've had a bone piece that's just kind of been floating around. Wait, have you just been like in excruciating pain? No, for that's months? the thing. Like it hasn't been bothering me until You're this symptomatic until like yeah. this thing, and then that's all of a sudden this, they think this bone chip that's been kind of just living in no man's land finally lodged itself into the joint line, oh. and so that's really what's been making everything horrible. <laughs> So I don't know. He's like, we'll go in there, we'll tighten her up, we'll clean her up, and we'll we'll get her good to go. So we're just you no, know, just a little pit stop, just a little six month six month oil doc, change. Doc, 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 I need two six hours. I got oil. I got a rant about Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. Doc, yeah, can we I, do it at seven forty five? I'll come in. I'll come in slinging hot takes. I mean, I'm already kind of a chatty Kathy. You start putting me in those drugs in me. Oh yeah, I just. Wind Ooh, me up, shut up. Wind me up and let me go. Wait, between so you right. said before we started, you've had this is your seventh surgery. Yeah. Booney, how between you guys, how many surgeries? Boone's I've only zero. had like two. I, I hate them. Had two. I, I don't do them. It's so like you're like your your knees probably needed more surgeries, right? And you or your legs. Like, haven't you hurt your Ooh. knees multiple you. times? Booney, you. Yeah, no, I need a full knee replacement on my right side. I need yeah. one at 30. They were like, hey, bud. <laughs> This is where we start to draw the line because you have to start signing stuff away. And that Jay knows that. That's when yeah. they come to you and they're like, it's so bad that we don't even want to take responsibility for anything on this. Or you can't play for us unless you sign. What do you mean? Like, oh, the team. Oh, so the yeah, team no, the says. Team so they came to Seattle, came to me and was like, we're cool, but we're not going to be cool forever. And they were like, that's when at the end of the year, they were like, dude, full arthritis in all three compartments, missing massive bone. They're like, dude, this is pretty impressive, to be honest with you. I don't know how. I go to work yesterday, and my partner, Bill, looks at me and goes, looks like it's way more crooked today. Are you all right, bud? <laughs> I was like, Bill, I'm not going to lie to you. It's really hurting today. He was like, it's looking really sideways. It's like a 90-degree angle, man. Nah, you used to price it down. Are you okay? <laughs> Never going to happen. I just can't believe that Jay is like, be in Tuesday, be back Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. <sighs> I'd be I mean, out for a week. I just don't talk to me. 
Text I mean, me. yeah, I mean, I told my wife, I was like, you can just drop me off. I was like, you don't need to, like, come in with me. And she's like, I'm going to come in. I was like, it's a shoulder surgery. Like, oh, she's, like, going in she's like, say bye to the kids. I was like, for what? I'll see him tonight. <laughs> like, daddy's got to go get an oil change. That's why I explained it to my brother. <laughs> Stop calling him that, okay? My son. <laughs> freaking me out. Daddy's like, he's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, daddy's got a bad part. Just got to go into the mechanic, get the oil change. He'll be out good as new. Good as new. And someday when you're old, you get to have surgeries too. Yeah, it's this gonna is be great. so. This yeah. is I've had two left ankle, two left knee, one left shoulder. I had to get a staph infection cleaned out of my right <sighs> arm, and then now right shoulder. Was staph infection football days too? Yeah, with Nate Peterman. Oh, Thanks, bud. I had to tackle someone uh, when I was with the Bills. I tackled someone and got turf burn and ended up getting two like staph pieces in my elbow like my uh, elbow got super swollen my forearm had this huge boil on it uh, hey did they give you the vancomycin i was home for bye week so i went to the er and they were like oh here take a thing of vanco wasn't getting mm -hmm. better called up another surgeon friend of mine from back in the husker days i was like hey can you take a look at this it doesn't feel right and this is on like a wednesday and i go in there and he's like he's like come to the surgery center after i am in surgery all day i'll take a look afterwards i get in there and he's like uh, call the bills. I'm getting you into surgery right now and keeping you overnight and cleaning this out right now. So you so, almost died. You so almost I, well, died I mean, from it, I almost, it, I didn't almost die, but it was like creeping towards my joint line in my elbow. And if it gets in the joints, bad news bears. You are screwed. Bad, bad, bad news bears. So Mercer. That, <sighs> that got me in. And then like I was on an IV antibiotic that I had to give myself for like two weeks. It was terrible. Dude, I'm Dude. telling you, some of the stuff Come you can on. get at football. Mercer. Mercer's gross. 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 gross and it's from yes. guys not showering and there was remember dude remember when tampa got it carl nicks literally yeah. the greatest one of the greatest guards in the nfl literally got it and like the whole tampa team got it it was terrible dude and they ended up getting a lot of trouble for that but i had it one time in college same thing they give you the vanco and it comes out of nowhere and you're like what is this from They're like somebody not showering and you touch them you're like that's gross <laughs> oh, that is gross dude. yeah oh dude it's I, bad that's why guys that don't take showers after practice drive me nuts like they yeah. just do like sit in the chair and you're like, <laughs> dude. They just like they just go home or they just what, they, they just, just throw I knew guys that just went home. And... I knew guys that just went home. Yeah, they we were like, wait. Gross. It's like you're disgusting. Can't do that, dude. <laughs> dude. So, anyways, we'll see. We got we got two hours of hot takes from Jay here. We're gonna do two parts: part one, part two of our Can part uh, day two one. Be after he's on the drugs. Yes, actually, that's the plan. Yeah, yeah. Emergency press. Have you taken it yet? Emergency press conference from the recovery <laughs> wing. I, no, I'm the funny. anesthesiologist is actually in your living room right now. Well, uh, yeah. You didn't know this. Just so wait. It's, yeah. Just well, wait. no. The question is, are, how much value are you going to need to, when you're walking in there? None. I don't. It's. I'm. Not I'm having a panic out, attack dude. for I'm you. I'm not dude. freaked out. It's just another surgery. <sighs> like okay. this the last one I'm ever going to have. Like you got to look at it that way. Like this is you never know, dude. Middle of the road. I know. That's the problem. No one thinks it's their last surgery until it's I their know. last surgery. Until it's their last one. Mm. Yeah, it scares so. me. Anyways, <laughs> all spell. All spell. Okay, I'm gonna throw some mics at you guys. We're gonna start. Oh, we're gonna start with the quarterback season. carousel. Here we go. Let's start with Mike number one, the greatest negotiator in the history of American professional team sports. Yesterday was Kirk Cousins Super Bowl, mm. and he threw for 475 yards. Five touchdowns and no interceptions on his Super Bowl Monday. And he knocked it out before having to uh, take Tuesday off to hang out with the family. Four years, $180 million. $100 million guaranteed and a $50 million signing bonus for a soon-to-be 36-year-old coming off Achilles surgery. Dude, I was... Cousins to the Falcons is the first, Mike. Your thoughts? Dude, I was joking when I said yesterday four over 200. Remember, you saw me like... I edited it. I edited it. I was closer <laughs> than what I edited it to. I mean, I just, we knew it was going to happen. Jay knew it was going to happen. We all knew it was going to happen. This is what free agency is. This is where free agency goes crazy. People are making a ton of money. Initial thoughts is, I feel like Atlanta is excited about this. Like, this is what yes. they've been wanting. They wanted this guy. Here's a guy who's going to come in, show them what's up, be like, hey, listen, I know how to do this. I've been doing this a long time. Just give me some playmakers. Give me a good offensive line. This is what they wanted, and honestly, I'm excited for them because the division isn't the same as it is up here. But at the same time, it's going to be interesting to see what happens down there. Like Carolina's retooling too, dude. Be careful. Like they're going hard on their offensive line. 
they're looking at this like we need to fix this problem too. Tampa, same thing, dude. They're going to go back. They're going to be retooling. Like It's going to be an exciting division, if anything, but it's going to be exciting to see where Atlanta falls. Yeah, I, I think both teams in the front office side of it, right, Vikings front office and Atlanta front office are excited about what just happened. Right, I think that Quasi and them did a great job of drawing a line in the sand with Kirk Cousins and saying, this is what we will offer. This is where we're at. And it probably wasn't even remotely close to what Atlanta offered. Now, I can't imagine that it was a four-year deal, all this, all kinds of guaranteed it, it money. It was two. Like, I had heard it was the Vikings offered like two years of structure, but it was really effectively one year of guarantees. Yeah, so I don't know. The longer it was waiting yesterday... Like, because I expected this news to drop really quickly, like right when free agency hit. And the longer it was waiting and the longer it was dragging out, I was like, he's coming back. He's going to be a Viking. He's just trying to, like, yeah. leverage what Falcons were giving him to try and just twist and pull and squeeze one more time out of the Vikings organization. Um, and I'm, hats off to them for understanding what their vision is of this team for the Vikings, how they want to build this team. But I think Atlanta's super pumped. You know, I think they're super excited. They haven't had, I mean, since Matt Ryan was in his prime, they really haven't had, like, the guy, the trigger man down there. And you talk about the weapons with Kyle Pitts, Drake London, uh, B. John Robinson. Robinson. Like, yep. they've got some dudes down there that are going to help him out. I'm excited to see what this Tampa offense looks like with Kurt. Yeah, I mean, this is, he, he's going to unlock, assuming that he's, he comes back, he looks like he's on track, healthy, coming back from the surgery. He's going to unlock these dudes. Drake London's going to take another step. Uh, Kyle Pitts, I feel like we haven't really seen the version no. of Kyle Pitts that was sold to everybody a couple years no. ago in the draft. So, like, as coming from experience, six years of watching Kirk Cousins, Purple Daily is my other main podcast. I can tell Falcons fans, you're going to get the most accurate pocket-passing quarterback mm -hmm. in the NFL. You're going to get a guy that up until last year is the most durable quarterback that's reliably playing every Sunday in the NFL. And you're going to have a worst case scenario floor of seven or eight wins. Like your new train yeah. wreck season is only going to be a seven or eight. Like you're going to be in playoff contention now for at least the next couple of years. And then I think once he gets to be like 38, then we'll, we'll have to see. But I can also almost promise you that this puts a glass ceiling on what you hope to do Super Bowl contention wise. Because at no point in his career, and, and it's not like he took a discount to go to Atlanta. No. You know, he, now, he's not top of the market. He's not Joe Burrow, $55 million. It's more in that $45 million range. In that Patrick but, Mahomes range, yeah. But that's still, that's, that's still top 10 average annual value. You aren't going to win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback making that much money, age 36. But you're probably going to win the NFC South, and you're probably going to host a home playoff game, which might be what Atlanta is looking for. Yeah, and if that's what your goal is, I mean, and they're just trying to, like, I think you got to think the Vikings' goals and Atlanta's goals are very different right now, right? The Vikings' goals are, let's rebuild from the, we got to rebuild. Hey, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> that's hey, what their Justin, goals are right now, right? Hey, Justin Jefferson. Can't do both. Yeah. That's what and, people don't understand is you can't yeah. have two superstars on the same team. They cost too much money. The two of these guys would have literally cost $70 million together. They'd have been like, blah, 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 blah. more than that. What? More yeah, than like, that, probably, like right? That, that's It'd my whole point. I think it would have been 80, like 80. Closer 80. to 80. <laughs> right. And that's why the Vikings were literally like, we just don't have the money to sign him. And we would if we could, but we yeah. can't. And it, now you're looking at this and you think even defensively. Now you got to go out and get some more pieces on defense. Like you can start to build around a real team now. You can start to build this cohesion of a solid core. And what are you going to do in the draft? You're going to trade the farm to find somebody in the draft. Somebody young. We got Sam Darnold. You yeah, break, break, you, trade, you break, breaking news. Yeah, you probably missed that. It came I know. I read it. Middle, I read middle it. of the night. I read it. The one year deal. I'm telling you, we're gonna sell the farm and we're gonna find somebody <laughs> in one, two, three. We're Dude, not, I think I close circuit silly. to some Vikings fans who are panicking right now because I can I can sense a lot of Kirk Cousins was a great safety blanket for six years and that you're gonna get professional quarterback play and 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 it comes off. A number of years where the Vikings had a lot of questions. They whiffed on go go back fifteen years. They whiffed on Tavares Jackson in I can't go back that far. That's too silly for me. I'm sorry. I could go back no, five dude. years. No, literally, I could go back five and go, yeah, okay, sure, they messed yeah, it up. You don't understand. But I can't. Vikings fans, dude. Vikings fans. I, I got forget. that. I'm they just never, telling you as a real forget. football fan, I'm 
Five years is how we Thank do you, it. Moon. Okay, I agree with we Moon. We literally dude. just wait five years, and if they haven't fucked it up in five years of the draft, we go, "Hey, we're doing pretty good." But there's well. a, there, there's there's a layer of, of no. PTSD for Vikings fans that goes back to T Jack to ponder. I know, dude. Br- Bridgewater, oh man, he looks like he's going to do something. Legs dude, I snapped. heard it yesterday. We were there for that. I was at hockey with Bear when the news broke, and I was talking to two dads, and they were like, "What are we going to do?" And I was like, "Oh man, they're in a new world." <laughs> Let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to trade everything to be like, we want this guy. And then you're going to put all your eggs in one basket. And you're going to go crazy with that dude. You're going to pay JJ. You're going to find defenders. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be super, super fun. Yeah. And maybe at the same time, you draft a running back too to help him. Maybe you just go crazy with the backfield. Maybe you start over. <laughs> new concept. I know. It's new. But, you, but dude, you were you were part of a team. This is this is what I, I just want to I want to calm Vikings fans here for oh, a second because it's going pandemonium they, they, over here. They think about the worst case scenario because they've seen the T Jack, the ponder. Oh my God, what if? But there are so many examples of teams moving off a good to not maybe maybe even a great quarterback into the unknown. Just off the top of my head, Lions moved off Matthew Stafford two years later. They were back in playoff contention with Jared Goff, and then three years later, one of the best teams in the NFL. Yep, playing Matthew Stafford in a playoff game, right? Karma. Packers move off Aaron Rodgers. They got better the next year overnight with Jordan Love. Yeah. Buccaneers move off Tom Brady. They actually get better with Baker. I'm not saying saying Love was better than Rodgers. I'm not saying Goff was better than Stafford. I'm saying the 53-man roster, the team was better. better. Dude, 10 years ago, San Francisco 49ers moved off the like 10 years ago Alex Smith was Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Reliable, safe. He's going to he's going to professionally operate your offense. He's yep. going to get you to playoff contention if not maybe to 12 or 13 wins one season. Injury happens, concussion, it's time to make a big boy decision. You move into the unknown, Colin Kaepernick. The, oh my gosh, what's going to happen now? Alex Smith is out of the mix, right? And by the way, the Chiefs did the same thing. Alex Smith really yeah. safe, 11 wins. 10 wins, division Patrick championships, Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. You Now, could you whiff? And could you wind could. up with egg on your face? Of course, dude, but this is like how many, how many people? That, absolutely. Dude, how many people in your lives do you know, I can count five off the top of my head, who have a really good, solid paying job that's safe, they've got a family, they got a nice house in the suburbs, but they they really know that they dread going to work every day. They've always thought about starting that business, you know? Man, what if I quit my job and took a shot, started that business, followed through on that passion? Like that's what the Viking the Vikings had a really safe, comfortable quarterback, but they were never winning a Super Bowl, paying Kirk Cousins forty five million dollars a year. And right. if they whiff, they whiff. But I applaud them. For, it's really easy to move off a disaster quarterback. It's really hard to move off a good, safe, reliable quarterback. And the Vikings I, did that yesterday. Can I just be the one to to reiterate this? It's not so much that they went off of him as much as he just didn't sign back here. They literally made him an offer, and he was like, hey, I'm going to test free agency. I'm sorry. I just got to see what this looks like. <clears throat> it's not the Vikings really saying, we don't love you. They're just saying, hey, we have other guys on this team that we have to pay. We can't pay you as much. We're going to offer you this. And then he was like, hey, no, I'm good. I appreciate it. I'm going to go see what Atlanta wants to do. The Vikings really didn't have a choice because if you sign Kirk, you lose JJ. And if you lose JJ, everyone's going to go, what the hell are you doing? the hell are you doing losing one of the greatest receivers to walk into this football arena? Are you serious? Or if you pay both, if you but pay that's both, what, I'm what saying. does your team look like? You, know? you can't. You can't pay both. Get that through everybody's head. You look it's like, not you look, possible. You look like the Rams last year who, besides Aaron Donald, everyone on their defense was either veteran minimum or on rookie contracts. So. Yeah, it's not possible. That's why it's like people are scared. You you have no reason to be scared. This is called free agency in football. Some guys just eventually walk away and go, hey, man, we're good. Now you're stuck in this rut of what am I doing? And that's why I said you're selling the farm to find a quarterback. You're selling the farm to go crazy to be like, hey, we're not panicking. This is called football. It happens every day. Guys leave and new guys come in. We're just going to go find the right one. Can you whiff? Dude, you could easily whiff on a quarterback. I've seen more whiffs than I've seen it go right. But at the same time, these kids in this year's draft are different. There's good players, and you can make really good teams out of these players. I also, I honestly think too. Last, like, kind of my last thought here on these two is, I think there was a part that we were worried about fraction division between Quasi and KOC, right? I think with the way things played out, neither one of them are really at fault. Yeah, right? no. I don't think. I don't think you know. I think if it would have been like Quasi, like we're not offering him anything. 
right? Like besides peanuts to come back, right? Here's peanuts. You can take your peanuts, come play for us on a hometown discount, right? <laughs> KOC would have been upset, right? But I think the way that KOC said, hey, we need him back. And Quay said, okay, we need him back, but here's all we can pay him. Right. And he walked away, like Boone said. I think th- this happened the best possible way so that those two aren't mad at each other. Correct. Yeah. Right. Those, those two aren't point, fighting. Yeah. Those two aren't upset. Like, it wasn't this huge animosity point between one or the other. Like, they came and said, here's what we can do, Kirk. We want you back at this price. Like, it wasn't a get out of here shoe type of thing. And he's the one that walked away. And so I hope that that, that causes some galvanization between the front office and doesn't start putting people on sides. I don't right? think it will. I, I agree with that, you. I think that. that's the only really positive thing for the Vikings fans can think of is I don't think you have division at the top. I think you have uni at the top. And now Quasi's going to look at KOC and go, which one do you want? Right. right? Who, do we, who are we going for who right now? Who are you in love tell with? Tell me. Mm-hmm. Right. right. You tell me who you're in love with and I'll see if I can make it happen. Right, I think that's the conversation that's being had now. Of hey, is it is it Bo Nix or is it um, Drake May? Is it Jane Daniels? Is it anyone Old besides JJ McCarthy? Is it like, JJ McCarthy? Who, who is it? Like, like just pick one, and then we'll you, go get him. You, you might have to go. start hey. coping with JJ McCarthy in purple here, my man. Oh, can I just start? Can I just say this though? Nightmare. I'm just gonna say this. I'm a little surprised that Kirk didn't stay. I'm just gonna say that. Not, I was not not listen even remotely. Listen, I know the beast better than anybody. Brody, I know the beast. But for as much as everybody here was all about him and he seemed like he was all about everybody here, he was quick to be like, deuces. They're going to give me four years, not two. two They were packing boxes on Instagram five days ago. I'm just saying. I saw that too. I'm just saying. For a lot of people that are like loyalty above all. I almost said that to you. I almost said that to you back here. I was like, oh, they're going through old VHS boxes. AKA when do, when do you go through old VHS up. boxes? When you're moving. Yeah. Right? It's the only little, time you little do Little nostalgia. It. Oh, I got I got one more minute to get drinks in. I got to get my last sips of water in here. Last days, boys. Go oh, the, wait. What's the cutoff? Hour? hour? Two hours? Must be two hours. So you have to fast, including liquids, for two hours? Forty-five. That's it. Pour one out for... Jeremiah Searles here, folks. Oh, I'll dude, and oh, insult to injury. My wife literally just texts me and goes, Graham's throwing up in his bed. So that's good. So I actually might be taking myself to surgery this morning. A little Uber. <laughs> little Uber <laughs> to the surgery center. <laughs> you need me to come get you? Yeah. Someone, I could if you lived me. up here. <laughs> someone come get me. Anyways, that's unfortunate for her to deal with right now. That sucks. Yeah. So Jay's dealing with pre-surgery shenanigans here. Hey, just a couple more things on this, and we'll get to some other topics. You know, six years. if I would have told you guys six years ago, because coming off the Minneapolis miracle season, the Vikings decided, okay, we're on the doorstep of a Super Bowl. Case Keenum, we like you. Not sure that you're the guy that's going to repeat this in 2018. So they said, Kirk is the final piece to a Super Bowl puzzle. Like, let's not lose sight of that. Six years ago, he was signed as a mercenary to win the Vikings their first Super Bowl. They missed the playoffs in 2018. Six years, $185 million, two playoff appearances, one playoff win. I think it's a failed six years. It's weird because you could say he's the second best quarterback in Vikings history behind Fran Tarkenton. You could say that. I don't know that I would say that. Dante Culpepper, it's it's not like the greatest list. Yeah. He could be the second best quarterback in Vikings history, and you could call those six years a failure for what the mission was when he was signed in 2018. Is that Absolutely. a fair take? No, it's a fair take. And I think yeah. that's one of the things that, like, when you came to this crossroad, I think a lot of people were looking at this like, dude, what are we doing? We can't just keep paying the same guy over and over and over and over and expecting a different result. Like, eventually, we have to start paying other people, and it, it costs them digs. It costs them a lot of things. It costs them a lot of people throughout the years that they probably could have still had had they not been paying a guy. And that's why I think Quasey was very smart about this, to be like, listen, we'll give you this. We can't go but we can't go max on this, man. Like, we just can't give you everything anymore because we need to get these young guys developed around here. We need to keep a culture around here. We need to keep a nucleus. We need something to stay for a round. And we have had to be selling off everything lately. So it's like, hey, it's a new day here, and this is how it goes. But I don't know. I still just don't get it. I Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm from Cleveland, okay? Don't tell me about tough times. I got it. Our team left in 99. They literally left. 94. They, they no, came back in 99. No, dude. They, like, left and came back in, like, 2001. Like, they were gone. Like, we're going to Baltimore. And Butch Davis was like, 
literally running to the airport. I, I know tough times. But eventually, you turn around and go, hey, next year's going to be better. We're going to figure this out eventually. Like, it's just crazy how people up here are like, oh, my God. You're like, Dude, there's so many more quarterbacks. You're going to be fine. Dude, We're this not, franchise. Though. We're not going to be fine. You're like. This is the other thing about that, dude. Like all the different PTSD whiffs. Oh, my God. Tavares Jackson. It goes right to that. Yeah, it does. They they won a division with Tavares Jackson, and then they moved off of him and just grabbed Brett Favre because they had the flexibility, and then they went to the answer. And then then they whiffed on Christian Ponder in 2011, but they they won 10 games dragging him along in 2012 because they had a roster, and then they they moved. They they had a badass roster. Teddy Bridgewater. Let's try him. Okay. His leg explodes. But 11-win season with Bridgewater, and then two years later, NFC Championship game in 2017 with, you know, like if, if you maintain flexibility, Keenum. you yeah. can go find. By the way, you could go find whoever the next Kirk Cousins is if you move off your failed rookie in a couple of years. You could For try sure. that again, right? Like, well, it's, yeah. it's yeah, not, and that's, it's and not that's scary. I mean, that's what I hope the Bears are going to do. I hope the Bears, again, not trading, trying to trade complete subjects here, but like no, that's, can, the, I, that's the idea of – accumulate picks get a young nucleus of a team and then once you have all the pieces laid and all you need is the the chess piece of the queen right you just need the one power piece left you go buy a veteran free agency who's ready right now and who 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 that is in four years i don't know yeah we don't really nobody don't. knows no one knows maybe maybe uh trevor lawrence is looking like an absolute stud in four years right maybe gardner Minshew's turned the the Raiders around and he's leading them to championships, right? You don't know who's going to be on the block in four years. You right. never know. But if you have a great group like Atlanta and you have a great young talented team and they've just been living in quarterback purgatory for the last three, four years, you go out and you sell the farm like this because you have the cap space to go do that because of what you built. So right. I think it's a great plan for Atlanta. They executed the plan. Well, I thought they've had a really good off season moving on from Arthur Smith coming in bringing in Morris over like I really like the vision and the path that the Falcons yeah. are on this year what is the I furthest see. the Falcons will go with Kirk Cousins in the next like three years NFC championship yeah. I could see I could easily see winning the in division yeah I could easily see two winning years. division but I'm, I'm telling you man the NFC is going to be tough like the Lions are going to be tough the Niners are always going to be tough Packers. Philly after getting Saquon is going to be tough like dude I'm telling you some Philly's- of these Philly's I know, bro. Been, Philly's been stripped and sold uh-huh. for parts. Uh huh. Well, let's do. Wait, let's let's do the let's do the Philly conversation. Do okay. it. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. So that's our next mic, the Philadelphia Football Eagles. So on one hand, they just lost to retirement the heartbeats of that team, right? Jason yes. Kelsey, Fletcher, Fletcher Cox, Cox, both retiring right off into the sunset. Bunch of changes in the coaching staff. But they they do wind up going out and making an aggressive play to get Saquon Barkley in. So three years, as of our recording here, these are the moves. Three years, about $38 million for Saquon Barkley. Get that bag, my dude. Good for they, you. By the way, how about we, can we talk about Tiki Barber? Dude. Who the fuck is Tiki Barber talking to? How dare you be like, I hate you. You're dead to me. And Saquon was like, don't smile at my face then, Brody. You know what that means. You know what yeah. the, <laughs> those hands are going up quick when they see each other. Hey, don't ever hate on somebody, especially a running back, getting paid in free agency. Like the minute they get paid, another running back comes in and after, chops them down. After Terrible. last year, I mean, especially after last year with like what he did for the Giants where he was hey, like, fine I'll Tiki right him. now. Hit him with a fine. Get right now. Sensitive. Like, and I'll I'll to hit him with it. Ultra. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Ultra. You know he was sensitive as shit when he saw that. Like, we never got paid that. <laughs> Rondé. We never got that. Rondé. <laughs> Rondé. Rondé. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're a pussy, Tiki. You heard me. Wow. About <laughs> aggressive. Like that. No, it's not aggressive. You see, you told me you're dead to me. Well, what? Tiki. So what's T, so what's Tiki saying? He stayed in New York his whole career. He was a giant Who cares sniper, what right? You that said. You're not Saquon. Leave him alone. Dude made also, forty million dollars. Good for but you. The Giants also haven't given Saquon right. Like no. they didn't Anything. offer him a contract. No. At least not one that rude. That, they probably that offered the like market one year. We'll give 11. you nine million, and then this team comes along like three years, forty. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? In division. Dude, I love it. Good for you, Saquon. I'm super excited and. Landon Dickerson. I, I I didn't realize that until Jay, you sent that to me. Just a low key signing that I've ever seen. A little yeah. was it four year, ninety million dollars for my guard. Eighty four <laughs> max value of eighty seven. 
Dude, how about guard, how about guards getting like dude, twenty million dollars a year now? Go, I text you guys too when uh, we you were talking why. about we were talking about Dotson. We were talking about Dotson getting paid. I think he ended up getting sixteen, 16. a year. Yeah, and uh, Mackie, you were like, so at top notch is going to be like eighteen, nineteen. I was like, I think it's going to be closer to twenty. Yeah. I was surprised. Like, I, I yeah, very surprised. Was like you got to be a dude, and then there was three guards yesterday that made Who, dude, my allergies are murdering. Uh, this is the Patriots guard. He made yeah. a low key like twenty one million dollars a year too. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Hold on. Where would he go? He went out. He stayed to, with the uh, Patriots. He went to the Patriots. No, he stayed right? with the Patriots, dude. Now that Bill's also, gone, they're spending like they don't even know they yeah. had money. They're like, wait a minute, we, we had money. all this money? Are you serious? Also, uh, uh, Ke- so Kevin Dotson got 16. Landon Dickerson got 20, 21. Robert Hunt, Dolphins guard, got $20 oh. million dollars per. Dude, good for you, big wow. dog. Going to the Panthers, but hey, hey, just letting you know, that's a lot of responsibility. Let, let's, get back you- to, let, let's get back to, we'll, we'll do fat, guy, fat guys in trenches get paid. Let's stick on Eagles here for a minute because we were down a path. So just Eagles in and out. So Saquon in Bryce Huff, yeah, kind of a, a from one. the Jets, a specialty pass rusher. He's not... Yep. If if you run the ball, he's gonna kind of just let it go by. But like as a third down pass that's, rusher, that's that's their entire defense. Yeah, right. Their entire defense is pin ears back go. Yeah, right. Like that's what they've been forever. That's what that's made them successful. They've always had dudes that just go that way. Right. Hey, as soon as the ball's hiked, that way. Right. And he's very good at that. Huff is very good at just penetrating and dipping the edge. DeAndre Swift gone, but you replace him obviously yep. with Saquon Barkley. Saquon. So that that's an upgrade. <laughs> Uh, they also signed uh, linebacker Zach Bond, but just in general, the way the Eagles finish the season in a tailspin, they lo- they they lose two of the heartbeat players of that team. What do you think is in store for them now? Is this is is Saquon Barkley, Bryce Huff? Is that enough to and some coaching changes to push yeah. this thing back to where it was a couple of years ago? Absolutely. I don't Dude, even think you- it's about. I don't think it's even about pushing it back to where it was about much was reshaping what the future what the culture actually is what does it look like here right i think when you lose games what was it they lost six out of the last seven or something like that like when you lose like that you can't just be like hey we got to get back to what was working it's got to be a total rebuild like from a culture standpoint Mm. and that's why i mean as much as it's going to hurt losing kelsey and losing fletcher cox and losing some of these like bigger pieces it's going to allow for new leadership. It's going to allow for youth to step up. It's going to allow for someone else to pull in a different direction and try something different, right? right? The worst thing the Eagles can do is go back into this beginning part of the year being like, we just got to get back to what we do, right? Just get back to what we are. and have, Like, no, no, no. That obviously did not work when things went off the rails. Yeah. Start over, right? right? And this allows for some of that stuff too. And, you know, the one signing that kind of went under the radar is Brandon Graham coming back to that team on a one-year team friendly like that's going to be a little bit more of that veteran leadership in a young d-line room right you're talking about guys like jalen carter and davis and nolan smith like young 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 players and so you bring in huff and you bring in brandon graham to kind of be the coaches on the field at times like that's going to pay dividends but i'm excited to see what the the new era of leadership looks like in philadelphia I'm excited to see what the new offense is going to look like. I mean, it's going to roll through Saquon, obviously, and it's going to be a huge yeah, you don't, lift. Huge you don't pay, lift you don't pay a running Hurts. back. You don't pay a running yeah. back forty million without being like you are the marquee. Like, I mean, you right. and then AJ Brown and Smith just be ready for Dude. the go balls because yeah. those Goddard. safeties are going to cut their eyes in the backfield, and away we go. I mean, dude, we've yeah. seen them do their RPOs how many times? Imagine what it's going to look like having Goddard down the field, uh, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. I mean, dude, it's going to be so fun to watch. And now they're actually going to have somebody back there. Don't get me wrong. Swift was amazing. And I can't wait to see him in Chicago. Like, I think that dude is unreal. But Saquon back there is just a whole nother level of how can we get you now? And they have a good offensive line. Yeah, they're losing Kelsey. And I think that after playing a long time in the NFL, you're like, you know what? I'm not as sad to see you guys retire because you're excited to see the next guy stand up. Because you're like, dude, these guys have been grinding. Like, I don't worry as much as everybody else does. Like, oh, my God, a veteran center retired. It's like, no, nah, that guy's been behind him for well, a couple of years. I mean, they, I mean, Travis Kelsey straight up, when they picked Cam Jurgens out of Nebraska he told him two to. years ago, he straight up was like, this is who I, this is my replacement. Yeah. Right? And Cam is extremely athletic. I mean, he ran a four, sub four, sub four. 540 Ridiculous. at the combine dude's a freak show athlete like very similar play styles so i mean when you get to learn under kelsey for two years and also play some guard last year he's gonna step right in there no problem
Mm-hmm. You know, the other thing too is that that division is wide open still. So you, the com, the commanders full reset, ton of full ton of resources. Reset. They're, they're full adding. Full you know, Dan, Dan Quinn stole a couple Cowboys, by the way. Yep. yep. Co- the Cowboys are sitting here with a bloated quarterback contract. Some weird vibes through the media the last Dude. couple months with players calling out Dak and organization. They just lost their starting center, and yep. also uh, they lost Dorrance Armstrong. Who now? Oh, he, yeah, dude, Michael Parsons went to Washington. Is, yeah, I know. Yeah. They, Dorrance Armstrong, I think, also went to Washington. Yep, he did. Yep, yep. Three year deal for forty five. So yeah. it, it, could could the Cowboys be coming down a notch? I mean, the the Giants. We'll get to the Giants too. You know, interesting decisions they have in front of them. But um, but that that division is not solidified to me. So like the in other divisions, I would say, boy, good luck. You know, if you're the Eagles climbing back on top, but I don't see any reason why the Eagles couldn't go in 10 games and 11 games and maybe that'd be enough in the end. They're NFC, still, yeah, so. their roster is way too talented to, I mean, we were sitting at week 12 last year being like, they're going to, they're going to fight the Niners. And if whoever wins that game mm-hmm. is going to win the Super Bowl. But like that's where they were at last year and they lost some pieces, but they're way too talented to not be in the hunt immediately yeah. next year. Uh, what about, what about the, so the giants lose Saquon Barkley. Uh, yeah. They did pull, Probably the biggest trade of the last Brian couple Burns. days, Brian Burns. <laughs> so they, Five so the, years, one hundred fifty million. They give up a 2024 second round pick, the number thirty nine pick, and a 2025 fifth round pick to Carolina in exchange for Brian Burns. And like Booney just said, they signed him to a five year contract worth one hundred fifty million dollars. He's definitely one of the top ten to twelve edge rushers in the NFL. For plays sure. in Carolina, so you know. Yeah, you don't get, get a lot pub. of recognition, but him and Thibodeau are going to be fun to yes. watch. Fun yes. to watch. And I love, I'm going to be honest with you, I love what Dayball's doing and Joe Shewin. Go out and you get John Runyon, you get out, uh, you get another tackle. Like they're, they're clearly like, hey, we need to load up our offensive line. We need to fix this problem. We need to solidify all these issues. Go out, you get Devin Singletary, which is not a bad pickup at all. I'm, I'm, that was Dable's guy in Buffalo. I know. That's right? why I'm Bo- kind of excited. Like he knows the offense. He knows what he's doing. He knows where to be. All these things are starting to shape up. It's going to be exciting to see what happens with them. Too. This is, in in my opinion, this division is going to come down to these two teams next year, New York and Philly. I think you're, I agree with you in the Dallas vibes. Number one, you're losing guys and you're not signing anybody. Two, there's something came out on PF, PF, uh, pro football talk yesterday about Dax suing some lady for a hundred million dollars because she tried suing him for a hundred. And this is one of those things Super where you weird. read about it and you're like, this is why this team got fucked up this bad this year because this crazy lady tried to sue this dude. I know she deserved it. And all of a sudden now he's dealing with a headache outside of the football. Like this is how outside distractions can ruin you beyond belief just because somebody had something to say that wasn't even true. And it's, I read the whole story and I was like, this is insanity. Like the letter that he got from this chick and her lawyer, and he was like, "This isn't even true." And she's like, "I want a hundred million dollars by next week." And he was like, <laughs> "That's wild, dude." I've dude not, I'm just I've saying. I've not like, read the full story, but that is. I read I it. Mean, I, mean, I was reading it yesterday. She tried to extort him for a hundred million dollars, and now, like, so, dude, this is one of those things where you're like, "We had nothing to do with this. Somebody else completely ruined our season because so they just came the out." So if you're the Giants, if you're the Giants, you got the Cowboys. Cowboys quarterback is in a nine-figure lawsuit. You oh, got yeah, the, the Eagles, their two core longtime trench nucleus players retired. Uh, the commanders are still the commanders until further notice, right? Like, looks like they've got some, yeah. they got some momentum going here, right? They got new ownership. It's great, but they're still the commanders. Yeah, we want to see. So, it if, first. You're, if you're the giant, now the other thing too is the Giants have the number six overall pick mm. in a quarterback rich draft. There's, but there's a lot of buzz from the combine, and you guys were there that yeah. they are. They are done with Daniel Jones, that he might start the season, but that he is not going to be – he's not playing for the four years of the contract. No. Um, so they've got some chess moves here. If you're Brian Dable, are you pushing to draft a quarterback at receiver. six or move up the board? Or receiver. Receiver. I think you need a receiver, dude. Like yeah. Malik Neighbors or somebody? Na- neighbors or Roma Dunze. I mean, beast. either one of those two you can't go wrong with. Both those dudes are absolute studs. And you talk about what's been the issue with Daniel Jones. Yes, the pass protection has been the first thing. Dude, my spring allergies are murdering me. I apologize. I look like I'm Dude, crying. This is me um, last week. Hey, I solidarity yeah, on the spring allergies. We're fighting. Right. So Roma Dude. You got this. Um, but also I don't think you can take a quarterback after paying Daniel Jones what you did last year. But you get, I think you can get out from under it after let me look up his contract. I'm pretty sure you can get out from under it it's after just this. The way, year. I mean, that it's would just, be 
But it's just like, why'd you even do it in the first place? Right. Uh, right? Like, but that's... if it's a mistake, don't you have to just flush it? You know, do, do you do you compound it by? I guess we made the mistake. We might as well stick with it. I mean, I think you you can't give up the opportunity to draft one of those t- big time receivers. Mm-hmm. I mean, they haven't had a number one receiver in New York since Odell Beckham. Yeah. They, by the way, they right? can move they can move off it after this year for only like a twenty two million dollar hit, and then there and then it's you rip the bandaid off. Yeah. What if, dude, what if Drake May falls to like five? He ain't falling. Out he is not going to fall. But if he did, I'm sure if they would. If he's there, then you got to have the conversation. He's not going to fall, dude. They're but saying big he's athletic, like the one. six foot four. Sound familiar? Brian yeah. Dable, big athletic, six foot four dude. Maybe needs a little accuracy honing, some yeah, mechanics I mean, honing. Dave, I think if any, if Dable's there at five, then excuse me, Dable. If May's six. there at five or six, then yeah, you absolutely. That's a conversation to have because you assume he's going one, two, or three. Yeah. Right, you you got to. Drake May's there at six. You take him. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, man. We're, that's we're one. Cool of, that's one of those. If if he falls all the way down there, you got to have the conversation. Unless there's a major red flag that everyone's missed, or there's a medical or something that no one knows about. Imagine like, those Drake May hands under the ass ass crack mm, of your guy John, John Mike, Mike, Mike Mitz. Mitz. right there. Hey, Mike, <laughs> take care of him. <laughs> Just got married, by the way. Congratulations, buddy. Did. I texted. Him, I was like, dude, John Runyon losing Saquon. He's like. I'll be in the states tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. He's like, <laughs> I was like, yep. Enjoy, enjoy your time where you're at, pal. Enjoy your, enjoy it. We'll talk. Tomorrow. That's the last thing you wanted to hear on a sunny moon. Hey, your uh, number one running back just left. <laughs> yeah. Gone. But then I followed it up with love the John Runyon side. Oh, love big. Love, hey. love that you're getting a guy next to you. You know how much I love the Runyon family. I actually just saw John Senior at the combine. Did you realize that he was standing behind us and somebody yeah. was like, "Hey, Booney, you know Runyon?" And I, John looks at me and goes, "Boone, how are we?" I was like, yeah, I know, John. He fined me more than anyone. Real dick. <laughs> Aren't you, John? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I love his kid. I'm excited. I, I am excited about the Giants. I really, I love Dayball. I love everything they're doing. I love what this this whole conference is going to be super fun to watch well, these two new, teams. But... It's also a brand new defense, right? It's yeah. no longer the crazy Wink Martindale. And there's been stories coming out about how Wink was like not really, like he just lived to get to third down. Right, like he was just like you know we'll just, they all do, we'll, dude. Stop but it! But like he's like, we'll just load up on first and second, stop the run, so we can get to third down, and I can be exotic. Yeah, right? like I think I do. think that drove Dable a little bananas, honestly. And so I mean, it's a new scheme. Dexter Lawrence, like all those guys are clear K's back. Like I'm excited to see what this defense looks like, not in a exotic Wink Martindale type <laughs> system. Hey, you guys, you you mentioned like you know John Michael Schmitz is on vacation, honeymoon, whatever. When you guys are active players in the league, and and this is your time off, right? Like yeah. season ends, and you guys don't have to actually report for, you know, off season program for another month. So you got like two, th- maybe maybe three months to live your life, go book vacation. How plugged in were you guys with with teammate movement and don't whatever your franchise was doing? Don't do that. Are you kidding me? I knew when everybody was taking a shit and wiping their ass. Like I knew everything. <laughs> I remember when we hit free agency in 2016 and we lost uh, Khalil. And I remember we had talked to Khalil the night before and he was yep. like, yo, man, we're good to go. I'm going to be back here. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's do it. I'm excited to do this. And Tony called me and was like, hey, we got a guy. We're going to be great. We're going to have fun. Next morning, I wake up to a text at five in the morning. Sorry, bud. Couldn't fix it. Got to go. And I was like, <laughs> what? And I remember Tony called me and was like, what are you doing? I go, Tony, I'm freaking out. He was like, we're freaking out too. What? <laughs> I was like, what are we going to do? And he was like, we're going to go after Riley Reef. I was like, oh, God, here we go. Let's try and do this. Like, they were pure panic. It, yes. Yeah, they, we they, 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 they went to Riley Reef and Mike Remmers, right? They spent Dude, a bunch of money. Calling, on when really? guys are leaving, we're calling them. Like, why are you leaving? What is What happened? Didn't you love us? They're like, Brody, <laughs> got to get that bag. You're like, please don't leave. Please don't leave. But they leave. Yeah, they my go. favorite my favorite was Minnesota and Carolina literally just like swapped tackles. Yeah. Right? They're like, We'll send you Remmers, you send me Khalil. And everyone was like, All our problems are fixed. Yeah. But like if you went and looked, everyone was like in Carolina was like, Remmers is trash. He's awful. We gotta get him out of here. And everyone in Minnesota was like, Khalil's been a waste of space, just a turnstile potato for the last Five years, right? So it's just like one man's trash, another man's treasure, and everyone right. just assumed it was. I thought that was the funniest part of it, but 
that's I was, the best part about all the free agency. Like Bryce Huff's a great example. I'm sure yeah. Jets fans are like, yeah, dude, did, like dude, ignore the run for ball. three years. And, yeah. then, and, and Eagles fans are like, right, but it's a third down go. pass rush. This is great. <laughs> That's why football's so fun. One like literally a state divided could just one side loves you, the other side hates you. It's insane how this Kirk, goes. Kirk but, Cousins, yeah, get his ass out example. of here. 180 yep. million one, and the Falcons are like finally a professional Bring quarterback. On. Bring yes. him on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I was always pretty plugged in just because I was always looking like, who am I going to compete with for like a backup role, right? That was always kind of where I was looking, or like, hey, who are they bringing into the starter? And so as a guy that had been kind of in years three, four, five, six, kind of that back half of my career, I was just constantly looking around like, okay, what is the plan? What is the GM's plan for the room, right? Is it to bring in a bunch of veterans and have us fight to the death gladiator style, right? Is it not to bring in anyone and just draft guys? Like that was kind of always how I was looking at it. And, you know, in Minnesota, I can remember after the 15 season, be like, okay, I might have a chance to try and come in and, and fight for a starting guard spot here. And I can I remember the day they signed Boone. I was like, well, there goes that guarding like that starting spot. Like shift now to okay, do I fight with Fusco or maybe I'm just walking for this career backup type piece. And then I can remember in 2019 going into when Buffalo into my second year, Brandon Bean's literal like his plan, and he told me as he, he when I signed my extension, he goes, I'm gonna bring in about six veterans all around that vet men deal and y'all are just gonna fight i was like cool sign me up time to go and it was lee adrian waddle ty naseki um myself ike bucker like there was like six of us that were all looking around the room like yeah there's only gonna be two of us left out of this group eventually yeah. right like eventually we know what's gonna happen but we all came in and the thing i appreciate about buffalo is they told us all that right, right? there was no cryptic he promised nothing like he literally was like all right you guys know what this is. We need to get better at the O-line position. We need to have more depth. We need to have more pieces. Go do it. Cool. Dude, you, Sign you know, me up for that. You know what that reminds me of? In the Batman, when the Joker's literally like, we're going to have trash. Oh, that's 100%. Yeah. He like snaps the stick in half <laughs> and he just throws it at six of you and goes, have fun. That's Dude, exactly I'm not kidding. When they tell you that vets are going at it, it becomes a war, but it's fun. Because you're going oh, yeah. to war with your friends. When you go to war with a rookie, it fucking sucks. It sucks because you know they kind of love them differently, and you're like, I really got to get this going. Like, no yeah. matter what you do, you feel old against them, and you feel like you're stiff, and you're like, I don't know if I can do this. And then, like, you're like, they love them. They just love them. Yeah, and they're the, they're the new hotness, right? Yeah, like, you're like, oh, dude. The, media, the medias are coming in and taking pictures of them doing their, When like, it's vets, it's like two crusty dudes fighting it out. Like, dude, I'm yeah. going to get you after practice. <laughs> and after practice, you're like, hey, I'm going to get some food. Going up, going up. Yeah. Going up. Yeah, just, everyone knows so the game. Fun. Everyone knows no, the yeah. game at that point, right? And you're like, "Yeah, dude, I want to feed my kids too." It's like, "Well, I want to feed my kids." It's like, <laughs> "Well, only one of us is going to be able to feed them the buffalo money." So, <laughs> Amazing, dude. Oh, oh man, it. let's do. Try let's it. do this, boys. Let's let's call this part one. Good talk here. Part, part one. one. We'll do it. We'll do a part two. We'll talk Russell Wilson to the Steelers. Oh yeah, the Raiders are making some interesting <laughs> moves. And we'll and we'll get into whatever else is left over uh, from Monday and early Tuesday free agency. The the best thing you guys can do, audience, to help us keep growing the O line committee, is give us a five star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and click the like button and the subscribe button on the O line committee YouTube channel. And don't forget too your offensive line lifestyle merch at O line committee dot com. Clean pocket club shirts, O line committee swag, all available at O line committee. Dot com and uh, large sizes available. Double Can I just say that I was wearing my sweatshirt the other day, the clean pocket one, and one yeah. of the hockey moms was literally like, clean pocket club, I don't get it. And then literally stopped as she said out loud and goes, I get it now. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> hockey people are killing me. I'm like, okay, guys, leave me alone. Yeah. We should make some uh, some hockey apparel too for Boone nope. to wear on the, the youth hockey rinks. Huh? Clean crease club? Clean Benders. crease club? Dusters, dude, they got, they got so. I'm not gonna lie, hockey's kind of fun because they have a lot of nicknames for everybody, and the kids start calling each other Benders and Dusters. <laughs> you just said that kid sucks. Did you go to the Minnesota State High School? Hockey no, but I watched it in a Dinah. Dude, I was surprised. Chan Hassan, they they beat Minnetonka to get there. Jay, have you ever watched some of these games? No, they are watch high school hockey in Nebraska. Okay, that's the, okay. That's dude. the funny thing, and I and I'm not a big you, hockey guy either, even though I'm from Minnesota. No idea like, how good these kids are. You think oh, of I like bet. the if I Texas State, State probably. football championship it, or Ohio, yeah. 20,000 people in that arena for the high 
high school Dude, hockey it's crazy. championship. It's crazy. And it's so fun to watch this in. And it gets it's insane. I know. It's wild. All right. Part one in the books here. You guys go uh, take a deep breath. Don't take any water. No food, Jay. Nope. Okay. No fast, eating. The fast begins. I'm on my way to come here. get you. Okay. Right. Part two coming in hot.